And today we're going to talk about the art and science of infographics. And my special guest today, please join me in welcoming Brian Wallace. Woohoo! <laughs> Hey, Brian, welcome. Welcome, Thank welcome. For the opportunity. Thank you for joining me. It is I, Are you kidding? Everybody <laughs> should be here. You know how it works. Yes, yes. You are like you are like famous in LinkedIn land um, for your well, for your insights, for your advice, and for your infographics. And I one of the things I really wanted to talk to you about and, and that I admire about you is you just kind of say it like it is. And I think that's from, very refreshing. I'm from New York. It's, just, it's how we're taught. <laughs> Brooklyn, right? Matters. You said from that far off land called Brooklyn, you said. <laughs> yeah. So fun fact on that, because New Yorkers are very territorial. So a lot of New Yorkers would be like, ah, shut up, Brian. You're not really from Brooklyn. Because I moved away when I was under a year old, and I actually grew up in Rockland County, which yeah. if for those of you who don't play New York City Metro geography is about, depending where you live, let's say about 45 minutes north up the Hudson River line from New York City. Wow. Yeah. And see, when I was doing my research on you, I was scoping ah, through your really? LinkedIn profile ah, <laughs> and nice. listening to some of your old podcasts, actually. Cool. And I realized you've actually had a very, quite a colorful background, right? Like you actually yeah. started in technology in neuroscience of all things. And you went from being a CTO, a chief technology officer, to starting your own company. Yes. So, so tell, tell the audience a little bit about that journey that you've taken. You bet. So the reason I left tech is because tech sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clarify that for anybody who's like, who is this guy and what's his problem? Did I tell you guys? he? He says it like it is. <laughs> I, I really just say what's on everybody's mind, and you're usually just afraid to say it. Let me clarify, just to back up a second. So, hi, everybody. Don't mean to offend everyone. This is just who I am. It's not an act. What I mean by tech sucks, let's look at the other side of that conversation. The promise of technology and what it holds and what it can be used for is phenomenal and endless, right? And it's an amplifier, sometimes not great, like if we were on our friend's Facebook or whatever, right? But how many times have you been on a StreamYard, a LinkedIn, restarting the internet, right? Like it just, it's enough to have everybody table flip and just call it quits for the day. You need to walk around the block or need a friend or need a, a copay. <laughs> so I found that after a while, I really was kind of tired of being that guy where it's like, oh, the server's not doing this or the website's doing that. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. And I like, I don't like just the analytical side of my brain. I very much enjoy the creative side of my brain. And I feel like a lot of the problems in the world is that people don't spend enough time harmonizing both sides. It's not that it's one is better than other. That doesn't make any sense. You yeah. can't do it without yeah. the other side. It's an yeah. incomplete yeah. story. But how did so, you discover that other side of you, right? Like a lot of times we just concentrate on what we know and then we don't go exploring inside our brains, right? How did you even know there's this creative artsy side of you? So it's a very insightful question. And you might actually be saying more than you think. So let me answer it like this, because I think mm -hmm. We could spend the next 28 hours straight just on this question, just FYI, with creativity. But let me say it like this. It wasn't that I discovered it. It was that it was always there. Okay. Mm. There is creativity in all of us, but we are brought, this isn't, I don't mean to excessively rant and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but just hear me out. Okay. <laughs> all of us, when we were little kids, we were all artists and dreamers and thinkers and painters and we would build things and have nap time and cookies and I'm probably making you smile and thinking about times gone by when you were in kindergarten or on the beach or whatever. Yeah. And somewhere along the way, somebody told you, you have to put on a suit and be a project manager and nobody mm -hmm. values creativity. Who's going to pay for that garbage? What are you going to mm -hmm. just paint pictures yes. all day and hang up stupid metal art in the background? Yeah. 
Well, actually they do. Creativity is rewarded a lot more than you think. Yeah. I was on a podcast uh, about a month ago where we were talking about predictions for 2021. Uh-huh. I, predicted, I don't know if it's going to come true or not, but whatever. I predicted that the world, even if it won't exist, the world should have a chief soft skills officer. Everybody's oh, like, yes. oh, technology, STEM, blah, blah, blah. Automation, artificial intelligence. Great. Yes. I get it. Technology is awesome. But you know what? There's people that power the technology. There's creative people, even the technologists. So I like to say I'm a recovering technologist or I'm a creative <laughs> technologist. And both of the sides of my brain are quite lit a fire. Yeah. Kind of depends on what time of the day and how much coffee we're having. Yeah. But yeah, I think that if we all, and this a gift for all of you listening, we, Fanny and I would like to, if I can speak on your behalf to you for a second. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not, right? Hey, it's your show. But I think we all just need to take a breath for a minute and give everyone permission to be creative. Because yes. without that, it's just buried. And yes. everybody rushes creativity, and that's not how it works. It works in flows, and there's harmony and resonance and frequencies in that that people, they don't really think enough about. Everybody's like, oh, it's 4 o'clock. Yeah. Fuck, where's the creativity? It's like creativity doesn't work that way. There was this yes. wonderful YouTube video I remember seeing. I can't for the life of me remember what it's called to find it on uh-huh. a pin. If I find it later, we'll link to it in the comments, whatever. There you go. There was this wonderful experiment that they were doing on children, which sounds creepy, but it was a wonderful experiment that they were doing on children. <laughs> Fanny warned you, I'm going to be weird, but that's kind of my trademark. Internet I love thing. it. I love it. Internet famous doesn't mean anything, by the way. Like, I don't make money, like, sending... Finish the story. (laughs) But I digress. Thank you. Focus, focus, come on. So they gave all these kids an objective where they said, okay, kids, draw a picture of a clock, and they gave them 60 seconds. And no offense to the nice little children that were in this class, but all the pictures rightfully sucked, because what are you going to do in 60 seconds? But then they said, okay, now here's 10 minutes. And if you saw all the beautiful myriad of very, very different art. Some people mm-hmm. make all flowerly, some people yeah. were geometric, all sorts of different directions. Yes. That's the problem. People, even when they are trying to be creative, yes. they don't Well, give... we've had all these things imposed on us, right? Right. right. Yes. So right now, if you are still sane and your city isn't on fire and all the other, you know, pick the wheel of suffering of 2020, right? Like all these different problems. I'm not minimizing them, of course. Yeah, yeah. But if you are in a safe spot for deep thought, it might be worth looking in the mirror, looking back at when you had some of this creative brilliance, maybe turn some of that on again. And whatever you do, even if you're an accountant or a lawyer or all these things that you're like, oh, nobody likes creatives here. Yeah. It's an incredibly valuable tool for everyone. Love it. For those of you that are in the audience, let us know where you have your creative outlet and post that in the comments below. We have a lot more people joining us now. Lindy Chapman. Hey, Lindy. Adam Kramer. He says, thanks for sharing. This is going to be a great discussion. Brian Wallace is awesome. Always be of service. Yes, indeed. Um, Shmuel, uh, Steve Mason, Sal, Sal from Wiley, Texas. Hey, Sal, good to see you here. Colin Harbor from sunny Dallas, Texas. Yes, indeed. All over. Now, in listening to one of the podcasts where you were a guest and somebody interviewed you, you had this line about don't quit your day job just because you have a dream. <laughs> yeah. So tell me though, like, how did you end up in having an infographic agency? Like, tell us really, you know, that that journey you took from, okay, I'm going to stop being a CTO. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. But yeah. at the same time, you know, don't quit your day job yet. Like, tell me what your thinking was around that. So let's let's unpack that um, segment. So let's get let's turn off the creative brain for a second and talk about the analytical side because we're back to tech nonsense. So <laughs> don't quit your day job before your dream can take off. Does not come from me. Uh, I'm probably literally quoting an author that I enjoy a lot. 
He was part of Dave Ramsey's publishing group for a while, but he's out on his own now. I haven't actually watched to see what exactly he's doing these days, but there is a wonderful author by the name of John Acuff who wrote a book called Quitter, not Twitter. That's a social media platform. This is Quitter, like I quit. So he talked, I'm not gonna ruin the book for everybody, but he talks about that. Too yeah. many people jump off, like you ever been, at a nine to five job and every, like somebody's like, yeah, I'm quitting. And everybody like, they get a cake and everybody's like, wow, congratulations. You ever just be the person in the back of the room, like raise his hand, um, are you okay? Are you gonna starve to death? Like, do you have any plan whatsoever? So a lot of people and their great ideas really worry me because people don't often think more than a couple steps ahead. Like if you're a chess grandmaster, are you thinking about the next move? Are you thinking about like 5 million permutations that will confuse computers? Yeah. Like what's wrong with people? There's so that much is, that goes into the execution. Oh, totally. The fantastic. idea is just like 1% of it. <laughs> it's, it's so cringe, isn't it? Okay. So that's the broad and that's the John Acuff and that's the book. Definitely check it out. So if you're like working for a job and you're ready to like put your wife, your family like in jeopardy and lose the house, just it's called Quitter and then the author. Say that John one more time. Acuff. I think it's J-O-N-A-C-U-F-F. -F, John Acuff. Okay. Great book. And there it's you go. perfect for it. mm -hmm. there you go. It's perfect for everyone who's about to ruin their entire life with stupid <laughs> ideas that aren't ready yet. It's not that you're so too bad. You're just starting at the wrong spot, right? Like the hero's journey, just like you said before. Right? And how did you end up in your dream though? How did you oh, well, that discover was your thing? That's an interesting story. So I've been professional on the internet for like 24, 25 years. So when everybody's like, wow, you're Brian Wallace on LinkedIn. I'm like, you know, I've been here a while. That's nice, but whatever, I, I don't know. Like there's new generations of people and new platforms and everybody comes and goes, but I've been pretty consistent for quite a while. I've been talking about a lot of the same stuff, but hey, welcome new people. Greetings, old friends and everyone in between. So like you said, and like we were talking about, I had almost a decade of experience in technology. Yeah. Rising through the ranks, worked for different places like government and like the whole dot com movement before that sure. exploded the first time around, like way before the mortgage housing crisis and way before 9 11. There were all these crazy tech companies that were going to take over the world, but the infrastructure wasn't really built yet. Fun fact like, we didn't have smartphones yet, we didn't have GPS on our phones yet. We didn't even have broadband for crying out loud. So like you couldn't even build the Ubers and whatever the world. So like why everybody thought they were going to win when we were in the dark ages beyond me. But we had a good time and it was fun. And then it died. And then I went to corporate America for a while. But my last stop before being out the door forever, <laughs> 14 years ago in a month or two. Yeah, August 15th of 06. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're in our awkward teenage years. So we can get to that in a little bit. So... My last stop was for a small media company right outside New York City, and I was their CTO. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a technology friend vendor partner who had his own business. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. I mean, he works really hard, but he gets to call out of the shots. I like a lot of this autonomy. I am yeah. tired of being under a lot of people's thumbs. I have a lot of good things to say, and I would like the world to hear them. <laughs> yes. Time. So one day I'm like, you know, I kind of don't want to work here anymore and just be my client, okay? And they said yes. And then I left, had them as a client, and also moved across the country, <laughs> which is in my about section on LinkedIn. Yeah. So um, what's interesting about that is that is the path that very few people want to do. Maybe now, COVID, everybody's moving around. But imagine, like, leaving Metro New York for Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. In 2006. <sighs> I, I'm what a, were you I, thinking? <laughs> who knows, Fanny? I don't even know. But I will tell you. So my wife and I actually- I love Kentucky. I'm married I, to a Kentuckian. So there. there. You Represent. I love it out there. I think that um, there's a lot of manners that aren't yes. necessarily uh, taught by aggressive New Yorkers that a lot of people would probably do well at. I remember one of the first times I went to the grocery store when I got to Louisville, and it was across a busy highway, and I had to turn left to get into the shopping center. And this insane thing happened. You ready? The people going straight stopped and waved me on a, like a four lane highway to turn left. And I'm like, is everybody on drugs here? Oh, <laughs> that well, doesn't I happen in New York. <laughs> right. That would never fly in New York. You're like somebody would carjack you by the 
Anyway, so back to good things. Uh, my wife and I actually had a chance to visit Louisville and all of its beauty and idyllic nature. Like everybody's like, ha ha, fly to banjos. Not at all. Louisville's a major metropolis, just like a lot of cool places. And there's brilliance everywhere. No offense to the coast, but like, hello, like affordability, being able to breathe, land, not being in a cardboard box that leaks, and then you have to sell your blood and plasma to make rent. I mean, I don't know what these people are doing, Fanny. Anyway, so- Back to the story. <laughs> Thank you. Back, bring it back, Brian. We got to see Louisville, Kentucky as New Yorkers in August of 2001. Two weeks mm. later, it was 9-11. And I'm like, wow. uh, not wow. so much. So yeah. yeah, it changed a lot of worlds back then. And we kind of had it in our mind that this was a beautiful place that we really liked a lot. And we could just see a future there. We could see a vision there. So just the combination of a lot of these forces, I didn't even, I was never on a track to be an entrepreneur. I was actually kind of kicking myself for a while. Like I'm 43 years Who old. Who was your first client? Like how did you come about getting, getting that first client? The first client was literally like the place I was working for. Ah, yeah. ah. So, and then it grew from there. Yeah, and then it grew from there. But, you know, I started very early on in year one when we switched focus, switched location, a lot of changes, right? And like, I don't have, I didn't have family in Louisville. I don't know what the heck I was doing. I was, I was crazy, yeah. right? Like, entrepreneurs are a little weird, right? Like, we are. We, we want the suffering. <laughs> yeah, like, entrepreneurs are probably 10 times more likely to kill themselves. We're all a little nuts. I'm not suicidal. And if anybody needs like the suicide hotline or whatever, get some help. And it's a lonely path. There's a wonderful article on Inc. Magazine about the psycho psychological price of entrepreneurship. More on that later. Ever but that? of all the things that, no, I haven't. Oh, it's but I will but of it. all the things you could have done in media and in the agency world, like, like why infographics? And and for those people out there, you know, like for the, we've all seen infographics, right? We've all seen the diagrams and all that, but of all the things that you could have chosen, why infographics? And to you, what what is an infographic, Brian? One more step, if I may, because there was a bridge from mm. working for other people, technology in New York yeah. to Louisville. So the year is 2006. We pack up from New York. We moved to Kentucky. Everybody's like, what is wrong with you people? So I don't have to follow the crowd. Following the crowd yeah. is dumb very often. Just because other people do something doesn't mean that you should do that too. I like to have a lot. I pride myself on taking in a lot of perspectives from other people, thinking about it deeply, and then having something original to bring to the table. That mm -hmm. has pretty much never changed for me. And a lot of people don't like that. But a lot of people that like me like it very much and appreciate it. And then kind of like the creative side, it unlocks a lot of trapped brain thought. So, okay. So technology, working for other people, New York, Kentucky. 2006, we shifted the focus from tech, pure tech, to I've more, always been much more interested in the future of like where web is going and all of that. Mm -hmm. So very early on, I started to have some clients and all of a sudden there's this crazy renaissance that's happening all over the internet and it's called social media this is pre-infographics so for a few years there we were a social media agency before it became mm -hmm. you could call yourself a social media agency and everybody who ever read a blog post or logged on to twitter thought that they could do what i did yes and we did some really cool stuff back in the day i'll tell you that we were probably one of the first places on earth to do stuff for john deere which is like this massive brand that yeah Tractors. Yeah. Yeah. Also invented the steel plow. It's like been around oh. for hundred years. We'd probably all be hungry right now if they didn't innovate. Uh, we did some stuff back in the day for Jay-Z, back when the Blueprint 2 album was coming out. All sorts cool. of really cool. Way back in the day, Wild West. Um, also, for those of you old school internet friends, anybody who remembers dig.com, this used to be one of the cornerstones of the internet. It still exists, but it's like, eh, it's kind of meh. But let's uh -huh. just go back about 12 years. There were uh, about 100 people, not giant corporations, but like 100 people, just like you and me, across the world that were responsible for about 50% of what reached the front page. The front page of this website yeah. 
was like the fountain of brilliance for the internet. All the reporters, all the aggregators, all the news sites, all of social looked at this site. This was the show. And you would get so much simultaneous traffic that a lot of websites would literally crash like you were getting DDoS attacked. It, I mean, it was like another world. Like, yeah. This is old school social. So over the years, I developed a bunch of really weird skill sets, knowing the human, neuroscience, psychological, technical. I just know right, left brain, what makes people think, like click, act, buy. We could talk about this all day, but huh. there's just a lot of crazy stuff going on in my head where at this point, I just have enough intuition and heuristics that I could tell you ahead of time a probable likelihood of success of where somebody's going with a particular idea. Which is incredibly hard to explain. Yeah. What was <laughs> the big platform back then? What was uh, your go-to platform? In terms of social? Social, yes. So pre-social, blogging was a big thing. Mm. Twitter was super early, like talking like 2007. Yeah. We were doing Facebook before there were Facebook pages. So you used to have to be a brand. And then they actually made you convert over to a page. That was really weird. Like I said, Dig was amazing. There were bookmarking sites like Delicious, which was owned by Yahoo, and then they murdered it because Yahoo wasn't. Yahoo should have run the world. Who in the audience remembers all these platforms? Yeah, Let us know. Cool. I'd be curious. Bring it we on some in. old school folks in there. <laughs> um, there was a website that I think should have run a ton of the world called StumbleUpon, and they focused on something that was more like discovery. So it was almost like channel surfing, where it would give you just random different topics was started by one of the most not as well-known internet people as you hear on the day-to-day, -day, but massively undervalued and underappreciated guys. Garrett Camp, huh. one of the most brilliant people of our time. He also went on to co-found a company that you have heard of called Uber, which was like a little side project. Wow. Twitter was also a side yeah, project. Just a side hustle, Uber. Yeah, you know, it, it's amazing how some of the proliferation of some of this stuff has happened. But I've also been very much into, uh, there's a technological creative innovation conference called South by Southwest. So for yes. like a dozen years, I've been doing tons of stuff with that. And you're a board member there, right? Or advisor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. They just made an announcement um, this past week that it's going to be all virtual, which is insane because wow. people get together and it's like a $350 million ah. event. The world is changing. I was there last year and it was so exciting and fun. It's but that's it's part of the in-person experience. So I don't know how they're going to do the this virtual. Is, this is in-person experience. Yeah. What well, else? it is a new in-person. <laughs> if you're waiting to shake hands, like when do you want to do that again, Fanny? Never? No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual <laughs> hugs. <laughs> Whatever. Like, it's fine. Everybody will get over it. So back oh, to let's talk about infographics, though. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> okay, here's the bridge. Ready? So I got sick and tired of trying to be everything to everyone. Social mm -hmm. started exploding in every direction because nowadays there are people who are good at TikTok. There are people who make famous cats on the internet and they have book deals. Yeah. Like, what? So yeah. I was getting pulled apart me and my small team out in the Midwest and the South. And it's like enough of this crap. I am tired of the untalented pretending to do what we do just by reading our blog posts or whatever. So one day I'm like enough of this crap. So this is like the end of 2008, beginning of 2009. I took stock of myself and my team's abilities. And I'm like, all right, mm. what are we really good at? We're really good at storytelling. We're really good at artwork and we're really good at I don't know, being going viral, which is such a misnomer, but going predictively viral that we know with reasonable certainty that the world will like X, okay? Yeah. And I looked around, there were about three people in the world that were making these things called infographics. I can't imagine a single person watching this stream knew what an infographic was in 2008 no. or, 2000, no. or 2010 or 11. Maybe it was probably just a cartoon. I mean, we probably just thought it was a cartoon back then. Correct. So way before almost everybody on earth even heard of it, let alone tried it, I said, we're going to stop everything that we were doing and we're going to do this from now on. Everybody's like, yay. And what's an infographic? Okay, whatever, Brian. Sure. Let's do it. Wow. To today, you took a gamble. You took a gamble, right? No, I don't. I don't think so because I see the world different. Like I said, I like to lead with ideas and not follow. 
I mm. not necessarily first through the wall, like the Kool-Aid man. However, I God. have the ability to look at systems and patterns and creativity to know what people want before everybody gets on it. Not first, but early. Before there's mm. the hockey stick, right? Before there's mm. the last one. I have an ability to see some of this stuff, which is really cool. Wow. I was right about social. I was right about infographics. I don't know what's next, but I watch. Oh, How would you define an infographic? Not the way everybody else does. So Okay. What does everyone else think? And then what's Brian Wallace's yeah. definition? So, okay, cringe alert. Here's what everybody thinks I do. Everybody thinks that I'm a moron and I can be replaced by templates that you can download for free and Fiverr 99 designs. We're not here to slam anybody. So don't take me wrong, everybody. But the way everybody understands expertise, like Fanny and I were talking about, and mastery, you, you guys didn't hear some of our chat before, but the world does not understand and appreciate true mastery and the results of what mastery can do. Some people always want me to do a course about building infographics. I'm like, I'm not gonna bother. It's unimportant to you. You want the benefits of what it does. So an infographic or an information graphic is not designed to win a stupid art contest. It's designed to make you successful. So like I told you earlier, we just turned 14 years old. So as an awkward teenager, I've been taking a, a good long look in the mirror and at what we do internally and externally. And I've been like brain on fire obsessed with crystallizing exactly how people should understand it. So we reinvented a tagline saying that we make ideas simple, visual, and influential. This is much more important than saying we make art because it isn't the art. It's what, there you, look at that, imagine that. Did there you like that? Did you like that transition? <laughs> I see what you did there. So let's break down what those three words mean because yes. they do require a lot more definition and thought. Simple and easy are opposites. Simple is hard. Simple okay. implies an insane amount of mastery that you can serve two completely different audiences, giving permission and accessibility to the uninitiated and delighting subject matter experts because they can finally explain the whole thing to everybody instead of taking five hours to talk about nothing. Again, all the technical detail, nobody cares. I don't care about the 802.11 new standard. I just want to log on to the freaking internet. That's it. That's simple. Simple is not easy. The easy button staple. Simple is very hard. It's like when we tell people to have your elevator pitch ready and it your your 30 second elevator pitch elevator and how hard that is. Is useless. <laughs> Let's talk about LinkedIn for one quick second. You know that byline where everybody writes title at company? I call yes. that the, what are you going to scream down the hallway to get them to hold the elevator for you? The precursor to the elevator pitch is everything that is wrong with the world. And I'm talking to all of you because I'm sure you're doing it wrong. No offense, but let's be real. You are. Back to simple. So simple, not easy. The easy button, Staples, and Amazon's taken over everybody. Hopefully Staples will survive. Maybe you can buy the easy button on Amazon. Anyway, that's- Second simple. word, visual. Visual. Tell me about visual. Visual is extremely complicated. Mm -hmm. Making cheap, crappy, repeated template art, stupid PowerPoint templates, untalented garbage, reuse stock photography, the stupid handshake, and all the people sitting around the boardroom is trash, right? Like if you were trying to make a news story happen for your cool client or this amazing fast growth startup, what are you gonna like send in like a, a little kid's PowerPoint presentation? I mean, like grow a brain people. We make actual original art. Like you see all that cool stuff that's in the yeah. back one over there? That stuff's by hand. It's wow. hard, right? It's it takes yes. a lot of talent to it. So visual, actually, you can click on whatever. So Pick visual one. What has, was the popular one? Restaurant um, recovery. Yeah, sure. That one's cool. So the point about visual is that there's multiple layers of stuff happening here. You have all these talking head marketer morons. No offense, marketer morons, but come on, you could do better. A lot of people say that humans... And this is so derisive. Humans have the attention span of a goldfish of eight seconds. Let me ask you a question, Fanny, and everybody watching. How yeah. is it that the same human will sit here this weekend and watch all of Cobra Kai on Netflix for like eight hours straight? Same brain, 
Eight hours versus eight seconds. The difference, accessibility, simplicity, visual, permission, emotion, trust, all these things. So layering wow. in the hero's journey and all of that beginning, middle, and end of a story where the person is the hero, not you. It isn't about you, everyone, right? And then not just the story, but the emotion. Emotion, story, and data. Those things yes. interlaced is an incredible thing that is a showstopper that gets you way past the eight seconds. You can throw Facebook and Google ad dumb money down the drain all day long. Yes, right? indeed. In, in a world where everybody, what do you, what kind of music do you like, Fanny? Uh, all over. I like everything from pop to hip hop <laughs> to R&B. Oh, yeah. An One artist? artist? One artist. Well, you mentioned Jay-Z, so let's talk about Jay-Z. Well, let's say Jay-Z decides his billion dollar empire isn't big enough and he wants to go do another concert. Mm -hmm. So the hype man gets up on the stage, grabs the mic. What does he say like 99 times out of 100? Hey, everybody, make some. Noise. <laughs> Noise, everybody raises their hands and all that garbage. And that's what everybody ruins the internet with. Everybody tries to be noisy in a noisy world. So if I get on stage like I am right now, I say, hey, everybody, make some signal. Mm. You know, pay attention to stupid noise. Mm. You're going to be a noise maker? You know how noisy the internet is? Like how many pieces of content just happened in the 39 minutes we've been yeah. on the air? Yeah. Millions? Useless. Well, that's why I love this tagline of yours, because I, I really kind of resonated with it. You know, in a noisy and overcrowded internet, let's try something different for a change. Let's make some signal, which you yeah. just said. And these three parts are like so important through quality emotion led, story driven visuals with data to pack, back it up. Yes. So emotion, visual, data, like that, all those things really speak to me when I look at things. Ah, but hang on, there's one more thing and this is the real thing. You ever see all those graphics where there's the iceberg and it's like, here's the little thing and here's all the other stuff. <laughs> Here's the secret below the depths of the ICCs. Yeah. And that word is influential. Uh, I did not say influencer because influencer is cringe. Influencer is all the also rands that say make some noise. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares about noise. There's enough noise. Mm -hmm. Like we just had debates and fires and mm -hmm. like enough, right? Enough I know. noise. All I our brains are tired. Take a break. I just like, all I want to do is go on Facebook and hit take a break like a hundred times a day. And then I go into my email. Hope you're well. How are you handling the new normal? <laughs> Unsubscribe, report a spam. Give me a break. Grow a brain. Care about people. Influencer is scarcity mindset, transactional in nature not out to help other people succeed and all about you. Mm. Sorry, uh, influencer is wrong. Influential are people who are servant leaders, heartfelt, collaborators, believe in a big abundant world, probably have read Bob Berg's The Go-Giver, probably understand what Zig Ziglar said an age ago yeah. before everybody became an internet marketer. Oh, man, he would cringe on today's world, but he said, you can get everything you want in life if you just help other people more than you ever seek. And other people would say, give without any expectation of return. And people are call me out on this all the time. They're like, well, what are you getting out of this? Are, are you monetizing the podcast with Fanny? No, I don't care. Yeah. Guys, get a clue. This, everything you're we watching- We connected right? because we, we enjoy similar things, yeah. yes. This is entirely yeah. a gift for Fanny. And Fanny and I are basically <laughs> the same person with a different haircut. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's be real. We're very similar. Slightly different parents. <laughs> different parents, but whatever. We're yeah. All, we're all good global citizens. So tell me what's been kind of like your top most popular infographic. Um, oh if I were to go through your website, I assume it's here um, under portfolio. What has, what's been really popular and why? There was a moment. Let's start chronologically. Mm -hmm. Let's pick one of the early successes. I mean, Older we can talk about it for a while. Nope. Uh, go to the website. Pull up the website. Yep. All right. Let me share it here. Click on, go back to the homepage. Just click on the end in the upper left. Yep. Scroll down a little bit and you see where it says case studies. Keep going. Ah, there yes. Go. There we go. Okay. Do you see where it, it says psychology of color with all the little paint splotches? Yes. 
click on that one. Now, here's the thing. Paint. Wow. Look at all that, all those publications it featured. Oh, that ain't nothing. That's just, we ran out okay, of Okay, walk us through it first and then we'll go through the case. Okay. Yes. Here's what everybody gets wrong about the world. Everybody's like, woe is me. I'm not music. I'm not apparel. I'm not shoes. I'm not impulse buy. I'm not Tesla. I'm not Apple. I'm not cool like Starbucks, blah, blah, blah. This is for a company that paints houses mm -hmm. and offices. Have you ever heard the phrase watching paint dry? Yeah. <laughs> it means boring, right? I think that if you have a boring brand, you have a ridiculous oversized opportunity to win more because everybody in your industry is probably asleep. You're the underdog, right? Say it again. You're the underdog. They're not even expecting a lot from you, right? Oh, oh, you hit one of my favorite words. May I just Please. click on experiment? Okay. Yes. David and Goliath. Who's the underdog world? <laughs> Goliath. <laughs> right. Are you sure? Which one was the giant? Remind me. The giant is Goliath. <laughs> David is the oh, shepherd. No, the and David's the underdog. Yes. <laughs> David is the perceived underdog. However, yes. I'm just picking on you. David is the perceived <laughs> underdog, but he's not. Goliath represents the big, the dumb, the incremental, and the slow. He's actually a giant who's just standing there with a big sword with double vision and giantism. And he's got like a servant who's carrying a shield screaming at David to come at him. David has a slingshot and a slingshot with a rock in it from antiquity, ballistics experts in one of Malcolm Gladwell's books have yeah. that that's like shooting somebody with a 45. Now let's try the question again. Who's the underdog? Yeah. Goliath is the underdog. Big and dumb often loses because it does not have enough nimbleness and creativity of thought to change minds. Mm. So client came to us. They said, wow, we love this stuff that you're doing. This is yeah. about a decade ago. And they said, we love what you're doing. So do it for us. And we're like, cool. What do you want to do it about? And they're yeah. like, well, our paint is better than the other people's paint. I'm yeah. like, well, go on. Well, we're insured and we're licensed and blah, 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 payment terms. Right. And like, so is everyone else, right? So every, every other paint. A gallon of milk, you're just a commodity. Yeah. Nobody cares. If you go to a fancy restaurant, do you want the ingredient manifest or do you want the ambiance? Wow. You want all the scent. You want all the smells. You want all the good times. You want to celebrate the occasions that are important in your life. And that's what everybody misses. So we said, that's not what you're going to do. This is, if you hear only one thing today, this entire month, let me just make your entire October or whatever 58th March we're in. That point right there is everything. Mm. People explain things wrong. They don't understand how they should explain it. Okay. Mm. So with this, we said, and this is why it fails. Specifically, if I'm hired to do an infographic campaign for influence, if the client tells me exactly what to do, beginning, middle, and end, starting with the idea, it will likely fail or at least not succeed to a level that Fanny and I will put up with. Mm. Why? Because we're really good at ideas. We know what people like. Why are you killing us here? Why would you stifle a creative, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Don't tell me how to do my job. This is so brilliant because this even pops up if I Google psychology of color. I've Chris, seen this I would tell you when that I Google psychology of color. A decade later, people share it on social like it's brand yeah. new. It's yeah. been in multiple languages. It's been commissioned in different books. National Geographic featured it. Every yeah. home blog, mom blog, interior designer, real yeah, estate. Where it was featured, BuzzFeed, Globe and Mail. Yeah. Yeah. All those Canadians out there, you'll recognize Globe and Mail. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Got to represent Canada once represent in a while. Represent Canada. Yeah. There you go. Yes. So here's the thing, right? And it's because of a paint company. That's yeah. what's like. So if we could do it for you guys, that, obviously. Yeah. Do. Right. Yeah. But here's what's magical about this one. This, I don't even know a better way to say it. So this might sound like hyperbole, but I assure you it's not. If I hooked a person's brain up to some monitors, this rewires the way a person understands something. 
Mm. We need to dive in so I can properly explain if I can just spend another moment on this fanning. Cool? Yeah. All right. So people before COVID, everybody had their routine. So let's say there's about 15 moments throughout the day where you're looking or clicking around on the internet. You're bored. If I rip back the veil of bored, what does it really mean? I'm in pain. I'm searching for answers. I need solutions to make my life better. Not mastery, but a little bit better than I was yesterday. I really do seek information to make my life better and all the people I care about and all my company, business, personal, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So part of that is waking up in the morning and scrolling through my Facebook and clicking on my blogs while coffee is coming. You can imagine all the moments in a day where you take a breath and you're clicking around the internet, the social web, news articles, whatever. doesn't matter. You do you. doesn't matter where. Yes. Wherever it is, just this massive web of all sorts of permutations of where you could go. So you can go from a passive, mindless, clicking around internet clicker where they're going to stop dead in their tracks, forget about that eight seconds because that blows the doors off of that nonsense. They stop and they say to the client, not only am I going to buy from you because everybody could buy paint, yes. house painting, business painting, like there's multiple moments in time throughout your life where this is yeah. relevant to you and you don't want to do it or you don't have the time or you're selling a house, you have a baby, whatever. You get it. Not only am I going to buy from you, but you taught me, you gave me the gift, yes. you gave me creative permission and knowledge, edutainment. Yes. I paint my room blue because it's created more productive or I well. grew as a result of having seen your content. Correct. And there's all these micro interactions. People are going to print it out. They're going to share it. Like not everybody's your customer. If Oprah tweets something, does it matter if she buys it? Who cares? Right. So there's all these things. And you know, what's really crazy. There was, everybody dreams that there's these moments where you're discovered and then like everything's easy from then on, right? Like if you ever saw the story about the pursuit of happiness with Chris Gardner, yeah. fascinating yes. story. Yes. There, everybody, like Hollywood, every storyteller is always obsessed with the moment. I will yes. tell you that there are multiple moments that are built on a mountain of failures where you look at all the sheer <laughs> stupidity and look down below and hopefully I've relatively grown. But I will tell you that this one was a moment because mm -hmm. that, week, I kid you not, Google and Adobe contacted us and they're like, we don't know what you did to the internet kid, but you're coming to work for wow. us. That was wow. a cool week. I kind yeah. of, I still don't even. And that was because of that infographic. Because it went so crazy on the internet. Wow. Simultaneously. Wow. Wow. People often ask yeah. me, what kinds of companies are perfect for you? Yeah. Who do you face? I say nobody. Not because I'm an egomaniac, but because yeah. that's a dumb way to do business. Yeah. Did I beg you to be on the show? No. No. <laughs> Who the hell needs to be desperate? Eight years right running. Now, the world is burning. Yeah. Everybody's like drowning in the Titanic. You think everybody wants spam calls? Hey, would you like a new way to pivot in the new norm? No, I'm drowning. No, thanks. See you later. Unsubscribe. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. Thank you for the deep, deeper dive. Oh, yes. And tell us about another one. There was another one on here. What was the basketball one? This is a famous one that everybody likes. So before we talk about the visuals, okay. okay. Has everybody seen the movie or read the book Moneyball? Are you familiar with that one? I've heard of it. I don't quite remember the movie though. So without ruining the entire plot for everybody, Basically like, that. and honestly, it doesn't even matter if you don't like baseball or you hate sports. It's almost better if you're agnostic to the idea because then you can appreciate the idea without any bias. So yeah. here we go, buckle up. We're gonna take a ride down memory lane into the weird and wild world of baseball. Ready? Here okay. we go. Let's Once go. upon a time, baseball was draconian and ruled by sports agents and scouts and everybody thought with their gut. And if you looked, uh, looked the part, the movie now. if you yes. were fat. Brad Pitt, you right? You should have said Brad Pitt. Brad then Pitt. I wouldn't remember. I mean, right, <laughs> yes. Brad Pitt is a fabulous actor, by the way. And he, yeah. did a, he did a really, really good job. He does a lot of different roles and he, he really turned it up in that movie. I don't know if mm. he won the board for it, but he sure should. Mm -hmm. Brad Pitt, if you're listening, you know, kudos to you on that movie. One of my favorites. And honestly, I mean, come on, you're all sitting around. You got some free time. Go watch Moneyball. It's on Amazon Prime or something or rent it. I don't care. Anyway, to ruin the book and movie a little bit for you, just a little bit. 
big and dumb and the way everybody does it, and we always did it like that, so we keep on doing it, is stupid because there's better ways of looking at stuff. Mm. Better sometimes means just be open to hearing other points of view. Yes. There's a point of view of data science and analytics where it said, instead of obsessing about how an individual looks and an individual performance, look at the team, mm. run production. All you need to do is get more wins and all you need to do is get more runs. And a lot of the other stuff is just noise. And everybody thought that the Oakland Athletics were crazy. And this team who was totally underfunded compared to places like the New York Yankees almost won everything. And then the Boston Red Sox, who didn't win a World Series for decades, if you've ever heard of the, the curse of Babe Ruth, yeah, um, it goes back gener like a generation or two. There were people that were, would root for the Boston Red Sox where they would go to the grave of Babe Ruth, begging him to reverse the curse. There's all like baseball and sports. There's a certain romance and story to it that anybody who's a storyteller can appreciate, even mm -hmm. if they think that sports suck. Anyway, long story short, the A's almost won, the Boston Red Sox totally started winning World Series, and then everybody had a data science department. And then this weird world of data science became a thing. If you mm. go to Boston, Boston every year has something called the Sloan Conference, where all the sports analytics people and the data science people and the sports people get together. I always wonder, like, if all these people are so smart, why do they go to Boston in February? I mean, it's like inaccessible, but whatever. No, we're just doing it remote now anyway, right? We're just going on the internet. I'll stop being weird. Okay, so back to the point it started to trickle in to other sports. Yeah. Here's where it gets interesting because other sports were even more resistant than baseball. Hmm. So soccer had its moment. There's a book called Soccernomics, whatever. That one's on the shelf over there. Most of the world likes soccer, but Americans are weird and we like our baseball and we sure like our basketball. Okay. Here's what was interesting about basketball. Basketball is all about these cults of personality and weird Dennis Rodman people. Yeah go to yeah. North Korea and put on wedding dresses. Michael and Jordan. I mean, and like he hung in the, the I'm never a sports fan and I fell in love with basketball because of him. Again, yeah. the story, the bravado, the romance. There's so mm -hmm. many interesting interplays of the magic moments that are basketball. So once upon a time, there was a basketball player who was getting largely underlooked, who was just mm -hmm. about 23 years old, playing through the Orlando Magic. He was mm -hmm. about a really crappy contract, but we said, uh-uh, there is a paradigm shift that is happening in basketball, just like there was in baseball, basketball is going to have her moment. He is the exemplar. If you look at the player efficiency rating, if you take a look at the infographic below, yeah, we changed the game through the eyes of the insiders. And they said, wow, we really should consider this guy. So right before the trade deadline, this started making its way all over the sports news, all over the forums, wow. NBA, ESPN, blah, 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 all a fire on Twitter. And before you know it, something, 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 he gets a $64 million contract. A year oh, ago, he got a re-up of $180 million contract. Now, that's pretty cool. So when you ask marketers, so what have you done today? And they'll be like, well, I got a couple of clicks on Twitter and links and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, cool. Have you done this? But who commissioned this? Um, people like that were representing and stuff. Wow. So... Wow. It's pretty fascinating. I will yeah. tell you one quick thing I like to say here. I think that people, clients, businesses are impressed about two specific things. One, the big names that you've done because yeah. it's like credibility and trust and proof and validity. If giant, if Google trusted you, surely you can't be garbage. Yeah. Okay, fair. And then the other thing that people care about is what you did that's incredible, regardless of who it is. Like that paint thing. Nobody cares yeah. about the paint company. Well, I mean, a lot of people do, but yeah. relatively speaking, it's not as well known as a Google or whatever. But what you did is incredible. And that overlap between those two circles, yeah. that is the stuff of legend that you almost never get to do in your lifetime. To do something amazing for a big brand. And that is why this one, wow. if you ever get an email from me, there's a link to it. Imagine that. Yeah, I know. I, I, I saw it. That's why I was so curious about it. But what, tell me, Brian, like what sparks the idea? Like what sparks the creativity? Like how do you go from mm. a requirement or a need from a client to this idea of doing it like that, right? Oh, man. Again, it's like the creativity question we said about the kids. When I was yeah. picking on the kids and then they had more time, giving yourself space and permission 
to let that creativity breathe and percolate makes incredible ideas happen. Hmm. It all starts at the spark of an idea. If I showed you my creative process, you would put me in the mental institution. Um, I don't what, know. I'm, what I'm beginning to realize about you, because <laughs> it's about the longest I've spent time with you. <laughs> Yeah, right. We're just, is, like, we're just is, chatting and the internet's just hanging out. I know. Usually have a better and I can't even happen. post, for some reason, I can't post comments from LinkedIn today. So uh, oh. there's a whole bunch of comments down there. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Clark White. He's commenting. Volta, she said, all this is just super fascinating. Cher Jones says, when you give, it pays. Absolutely. Uh, just tons of great comments in there. And I, I can't pull it up on my my feed for some reason. But I have it you. open. Do you want me to say anything to anybody? What's up? For all of you. No, no, no. Usually I can like click on it in StreamYard and then it pulls up the audience comments. But I Remember can't. when I said the tech sucks? <laughs> tech, tech failed me today. Yes. We love you, tech. Please behave. So but no, what I wanted to say. We love all your questions. Keep them coming. What I, yeah, please drop any questions you have for Brian along the way. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, yeah. what I'm realizing about you, Brian, is that you, you have all these like thoughts, right? Like you pull in movie ideas, concepts from books, things that happened in your past, mm -hmm. maybe something you saw on the internet one day, a conversation you had with somebody. Yeah. And then somehow it all just kind of goes into your brain and then it just kind of like sorts it and then out comes an idea. <laughs> yeah. So I am a polymath. Is that a, is that a good summary? <laughs> it is. Let me say it my way. Okay. So we can bounce a few ideas here. Yes. So I am a polymath. That means I'm good at a number of different things. Over the years, I've bothered to adjoin a bunch of things that I'm good at to kind of make an industry that didn't exist before. That is very hard to do. I am a visionary type. I love thinking about really weird ideas that people haven't thought of before, adjoining different things. Like, so take this, like I'm a religious person, but the first half of my life so far, I wasn't. So like even my brain doesn't work like most people you meet because imagine my brain is like this weird Mobius strip that goes between cutting edge technology and ancient wisdom and left and right brain. So like I'm looking like a lot of people while they're just like looking at one wavelength, I'm looking at like all this yeah. crazy stuff that's happening. Like remember the moment in the matrix where Neo start, I just ruined the movie, but if you haven't seen the matrix by now, go get a life. Anyway, remember when Neo finally sees like everything in all of yes. its non color. The aha. Yeah. Yeah. So I've had enough experience in life events, some of which are very sad and traumatic, to be in at least life 2.0 right now. So I have, I'm very self-aware and I'm very passionate about revealing a lot of what I'm good at to help others. Yeah. And yeah. everything that I'm not good at, I don't try to be well-rounded all day. Who cares about that noise? Yeah. I, well, I, and I think <laughs> even for what I've noticed is... Um, have you ever done strengths finder assessment, Brian? Sure. Um, so one of my, my number one strength is connectedness. And I have a feeling that you probably have connectedness somewhere inside you. Oh yeah, all day long. Because like, a lot of people think I'm the human LinkedIn. They're like, how did you know that? Like, I remember there was this one poor guy that I met at South by Southwest. We were at a party and then I met him again like seven years later. And he's like, oh, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. I'm like. You're not meeting me now. Don't you remember seven years ago where we were at the party and we were at this corner? He's like, what, what do you work for the FBI? What the hell's the matter with you? Right? So like, yeah. I don't know. I have weird things that don't make any sense in my head. That's a, the best but way. But if I, I may, like, I think that's, that's the genius of it, right? And I think for those people that yes. may not have your exact brain, but those that are in the audience, I think kind of the message here is that try to tie together random ideas to form a new idea or a new thing, right? Like you went from Moneyball movie to um, baseball to basketball and then to like promoting statistics and, and then suddenly you have this infographic. Um, and so I think like maybe for those of you that are on your creative journey, 
-hmm. Look at how different things can be connected together that no normal person would put together. And that's how this new new creation comes about. Well, right. So on that, and this is an important point to think about when you're thinking creative and differently, Fanny said a bunch of things that many of you will say, these are all different. Why are they relevant? I don't see them different at all. I see everything that she just said as the same, and I'm running like a little string through everything. Because if you actually like really zoom back and think like a visionary and swoop around like a crazy person and really turn up your creative stuff, you will see that there's connect. everything is connected to everything. Mm -hmm. And it's a little hard to see and you probably won't see all of the connections, but if you're lucky, you will have that moment when you give yourself enough space and deep thought without all of today's interruptions to really just see a harmony in all of that. Now, a lot of your stuff is very, very data rich, right? Like sure. just that infographic we looked at, like there's so much data in there. How mm -hmm. do you go about, so now we're switching to the other side, right? Like how do you go about yeah. gathering the data, finding the relevant data? Because data is everywhere, right? Data is garbage. You, know you ever hear lying through statistics? It's a thing. <laughs> Right. So polls show blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. really? You just stack the deck with nonsense. If I say that three out of four dentists agree that blah, blah, blah toothpaste is for you, our over marketed to brains probably think, well, these guys are just getting paid a lifetime supply of toothpaste to be shills. Yeah. Oh, you want to talk about the one on the screen? Oh, well, like, like look at this, all this data. Where do you even. Wait, wait, no, scroll down a little more. I have a very specific point. No, other way. Okay. Other way. Other way. Other. A little more, a little more. No, no, no. You were going right. Down, down, more. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Right there. Nope. No, keep going. More. More. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. People, the suspense is killing you all. What is he going to talk about now? Keep going. A little more. Where the heck is it? Almost there. One more. Done. Stop. Right there. No, no. See where it says $100 with the little gift yeah. card? Yeah. A little bit. Okay, stop, stop. Right there. No, no. Good. Okay. One <laughs> micron up because I want to hide the answer. Okay. Other way. Yeah, good. Stop, stop, stop. Good. Perfect. Everybody who's just joining right now, it's like, what the heck are you guys doing right now? <laughs> what, like, here's how you scroll on the internet. What in the world? We're, it's past six o'clock here. We're getting weird. Welcome, everybody. We appreciate you. So here we go. A lot of people do the dumb thing. They turn off the creativity and they just go all with stats. Mm. I'm going to show you the wrong way and then I'm going to okay. show you the right way. The wrong way is I have lots of data and information. I'm going to look through all the data and then come up with a story. First, come up with the story. If you've got so much information about everything, you can find whatever you want to support. Oh. Very interesting. Yes. Creative first. Yes. You got to have the idea. Creative first. Volta, that one's for you out there. there you go. Volta's an artist in the audience. I love it. We appreciate you. Okay. Now, now that we're talking about data, let's put our data hat on or our data yarmulke. Mm -hmm. For those of you who think that's funny. On the left side of the brain. Yep. Yeah. There it is. Ready? So here we go. It is not about building a BuzzFeed listicle and a blog post about the 10 reasons why stupid random stats are boring. It is about pulling up stats that a news reporter would look at that one stat, forget about the whole infographic, forget about everything. If this was just the email subject, would they fall out of their chair with amazement? Which is kind of a weird phrase, but stick with me. Okay, let's play a little game, everybody. So there is a stat that Fanny has covered by the screen. No cheating, Fanny, don't give any hints. Okay. They actually got a hint. Hands up. Hands up. <laughs> in the year 2016, uh -huh. how much money did Amazon make just on unused gift cards? Oh, my God. It sure sounds like a fascinating thing, right? Like, that would be something if you were just hanging out with friends and family and having wine, having coffee, yeah. going out to dinner, whatever, this at a party. A party mingling topic. This right? is we are the life of the party. Happy hours, yes. And I, when I'm at an event or a party, it comes up a lot. Do you pull that up? That's your. Yes. So drum roll, of course. Do I get to guess? Am I guessing? 
Of course you do. Guess. Okay. Everybody guess. Come on. Okay. Everybody put your answer in the comments. Okay. How many, how much money does Amazon make from unredeemed gift cards? Right? That's the question, right, Brian? That is correct. I see Clark White has ventured a guess of a hundred billion. Wow. wow. That is a big number. Steve <laughs> Madsen says billion. They're, they're all in the billions. I'm gonna go with up. I'm gonna go with nine hundred and fifty million. That is oddly precise. How did you come up with that one number, I wonder? I didn't think it was in the billion, so I guessed a high million number. So here's what I would tell you. I think that you were subconsciously informed by the other people. So here's what I think. I could be, yes. You yeah. can manipulate, and this is proof positive that data, so much data is flawed. If you actually went and uncovered everything, you would be horrified to see how shaky a lot of these studies are. So here's, here's the thing. We already set the stage by building it up that everybody started guessing in the billions. Yeah. And then I used the word billions twice. Right? Clark. Yeah, so Clark said 100 billion, Steve said billions, Volta said 10 billion, Steve said 1 billion. Then you started saying almost a billion, but you're playing the price is right game where it's not a billion, but don't, it's not going to be slightly different from the crowd, but not right, too right, right, right. Yeah, So like you're the one who's like nine, 951 billion, 400, yeah, whatever. I get yeah, it. Yeah. At yeah. million, not billion. So all right, so we've all ruined all of it. Okay, so the big reveal. Let's okay, get it. What is it? can I scroll now? Yes. When did this become a game show, by the way? Wow. Um, 2.4 billion. And that's just in 2016. They make so much money just because you didn't put your gift card in. No way. And that hits you in a part of a brain that even the analytics are emotional. Oh, so sometimes yes. internally we call that a boom step. You know why it's emotional? Because I'm thinking about all the gift cards that I've given as birthday gifts. Yes. And it might still be in their inbox. Yes. So it's actually you know. my money. It's my money that got wasted. You not my money. Can you help everybody? I'm going to give everybody a gift <laughs> that will probably literally make the money. This is not a scam. It's an actual website. There is a website called missingmoney.com. So every state in America has to report unclaimed property. So if you ever, it could be any number of different things, business, personal, whatever. If you type in your name or your business in whatever state, uh -huh. there could be like thousands of dollars just sitting there that got unclaimed and you fill out a form and they send it to you. Wow. So like you said, it hit you in a part of your brain where it's like, oh man, that's so much money. But it's not just that it's a big number and that it's Amazon, it relates to you, it relates to you giving gifts, which is an emotional thing and a data yeah. thing. So yeah. there's so much stuff in just one little stat we can talk about for like an hour. Well, let's so get to that because we're already like um, an hour and 10 minutes in, but I-, I oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, right. let's get back to it. Where are we at? Let, real quick, emotion, okay? Because we're taught, oh, don't bring emotion to business. Don't bring emotion to work, right. to technology, that. right? Just be but, a good little boy. But even just boy. that, right? That yep. your illustration alone elicited an emotion from me and from the audience, as you can see from the <laughs> from the comments, mm -hmm. right? Why why is it so important to tie emotion and reactions into infographics or creativity in that in a broader sense? Do you ever buy a diamond with one facet? <laughs> like. I don't to me it's like clear as day. Like people yeah. are like, what's the one thing I should do? I'm like, that doesn't exist. Like if we were doing if we had a war, would we just bring in the infiltrate? Would we just bring in a, one helicopter? Would yeah. we bring in all of the armed forces? Would we bring in cybersecurity? Like, why do people think like this? People need to understand that just like a diamond, different yeah. campaigns, different businesses have facets that when you look at the adjoinment of them. Mm. That's where the brilliance is. So people just don't get it. Mm. And that's but how do you know how to elicit the the emotion? How do you know what to what will bring about the emotion? I don't know. Nobody knows anything, but we're not going to get all esoteric and philosophical here. But I'd say with at least a big you let me down this hole. 
and Brian. Yeah, I mean, we're getting I'm philosophical. Holes you want, right? We got to leave some room for the rabbits because if we take over all their rabbit holes, they have nowhere to live. So besides getting weird, to answer your question properly, I love a magical word called intuition. Intuition mm. is applied wisdom over time. So mm. if I just did this once yesterday, I wouldn't be that good. You know, the 10,000 hour rule, it's not a joke. If you've done something for, let's say, a decade of mastery, that means you're really good. Mastery doesn't mean that you got a C on your test. It means you got an A. Getting an A yeah. is hard, right? Yeah. That's like Malcolm different. Gladwell. You mentioned him, the 10,000 hours, right? Yep. To be an expert. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. So I and others on the team here have spent enough time getting good at this that we, with reasonable prediction, can tell yeah. you what's going to work because we've done it. Right, we've yeah. already been the Michael Jordan. We've played the game in our yeah. mind. Yeah. So when you've already played it so many times that you win, it's easy. The formula is there. Easy. Yeah. 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 There's that easy button. The easy well, button. Just work. But as up. a result, you've attracted Fortune 500 clients to you. From I mean, if I were to like boil it down, not that it it needs to be boiled down, but like when you think about it from a graphic a few words and, you know, colors, mm -hmm. you've made it into this business and an art and science to it to attract Fortune 500 clients. And how do you get in front of them? How did you, how did you win those clients that you ended up with? Something, everybody who hears me talk, and if you click on the clients thing, you can have a giant page of yeah. logo that scares everybody. I get a, such a, a weird reaction with this page. A lot of people say, oh, well, I'm only so-and-so big. Can you even work with me? And I'm like, ha, 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 of course I can. No, but <laughs> people like all these names. Like Forbes has a power brand list of some of the most famous names in the world, and we've got a lot of them in here. Yeah. So if you've ever heard me say anything on the internet, stop me if you've heard this one, mm -hmm. but just to repeat for everybody who hasn't heard this already, if you ever want to get UPS as a client, go get FedEx because... Trusted brands trust other trusted brands, uh, right? So once we start making some signal, that signal radiates and turns into a little bit of noise, but not noise, but amplification. And the amplification is well received. Mm -hmm. So like this stuff is like a legend in the making, right? So like we've yeah. done some really incredible things for lots and lots of people and made them successful, right? Yeah. Does it mean that we power all the companies in the world? Of course not. We're doing like a little thing, but for everybody and not just for fortune 500s, but you know, like, much like I'm wearing a suit, but with sweatpants right now, I used to wear a suit in corporate America. So I've been on the other side of the table. So yeah. I know how to speak corporate, but I also know how to kind of be their secret rogue, secret weapon outsider mm -hmm. that they get to take the credit for when it's great and blame us if they don't listen to us. Right. So in a way, like, so one of your tips then was... <laughs> work for the competitor to attract the other clients, right? Let's try it a, a different way because I get what you're saying, but something that I don't want to be lost is do something good enough to get their attention. Mm. And then once you get some of their attention, you will get all of their attention. Love that. Thank you. You bet. Ryan, time, I mean, this is like the fastest, I feel like hour that I've ever spent. <laughs> we just... We just went down all these wonderful avenues and and I so appreciate you. Um, oh, and welcome. audience, let us I'm know what you thought, that. right? Like Volta's like, this kind of intuition is goals. Fascinating. Yes. Clark White, he says, more. <laughs> Emotion just as top sales performers, they bring it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So Brian, I always like to kind of wrap up with gratitude. Um, I think... It's, it's such a wonderful practice, especially during these challenging times right now. So for you, what, what are you grateful for right now? Everything. Mm -hmm. Every day that we have is an incredible gift. I try to tell people that like, man, I don't even know how to get into this one, but basically like imagine like every day is your last. Can you go to bed at night saying that I truly achieved as much as I can in this life, in this moment today? It's yeah. a little hardcore for many people that don't know where I'm coming from and might not know all my backstory. But let's just say that I've had a life 2.0 game changing moment in my life that was very traumatic, where that's how I think. Yeah. So 
I am literally grateful for every day I have on this earth. Mm. I love it. And I think that whenever somebody's in a bad mood and, oh, this and that's happening in the world, and again, I'm not minimizing it. I understand many people are hurting. I am too. It's hard. It's hard to be strong in a world right now where everyone is hurting. But I'm going to do my best to be that rock for as many people as possible. So everybody who's in a bad mood, everybody who had a bad day, hard day, blah, 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 can't go on. I say to all of you, did you wake up this morning? <laughs> Yeah, and when we had some fun on this podcast <laughs> or this show, not podcast. Arms and legs. Do you have sight? Do you have loved ones. I mean, yes. life isn't as bad as you take it to be at face value because there's a lot more going on if you just in tune yourself. And I like to tell people that the modern day currency in the 2020 dumpster fire that is our life right now is not Bitcoin or the dollar or stocks or growth funds or whatever, or side hustles mm -hmm. or whatever these horrible words are, but it's just having a fit mental model to deal with the day and the task at hand. Yes. Yeah. Love that. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the audience for sharing all your thoughts and comments. Please connect with Brian Wallace and uh, you will find him all over LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> connect with him and uh, follow his content. And Brian, thank you. Thank you, Such thank you, thank you. This is Appreciate amazing. It. It's been it. so fun. <laughs> it was a blast.